We've received voluminous uh, and very substantive comments as well as the quantitative impact study, study that we put out. We got those responses in mid-January and we're carefully analyzing them. We had asked for very specific, detailed, data-based comments and I'm, I'm happy to say that we did, we did get that. So we're now just now reaching the stage where we can begin to make decisions about how to proceed. We really haven't made any decisions yet, but I, I think I can say a few things. First, we do hear the concerns, and, and I do expect that there will be broad and material changes to the proposal. Um, I, I'll add that I, I'm confident that the final product uh, will be one that does have broad support both at the Fed and, and in, in, in the broader world. Um, as far as process is concerned, we're really not at the stage of making uh, decisions about that. That's, can, that's down the road at least a bit. I will say the question we get is, is reproposal. And I will say that uh, we haven't made that decision, but if, if when we get to that point, that turns out to be the appropriate thing, we won't hesitate to do it. You it's won't rule that option. out. You would not rule that out at this stage of the game, reproposal. Not at all. No, I think it's, it's, a, it's a very plausible option. It will depend on how things lie at the time when we reach that point. Have you in the past acknowledged uh, in front of this committee that you will not move forward with proposals without consensus? Or you have acknowledged that in the past, that, and we appreciate uh, that commitment to consensus. Um, have you, uh, ha have you um, achieved consensus yet uh, on, the Bo on the Basel proposal? Let me say I, I am confident that we will, but that's a process that we're, as I mentioned, you know, we're evaluating the comments. We're just coming to the place where we're going to start talking about the path ahead. And I, I am confident that we'll, we'll achieve a very broad support on the board. I, uh, I want to get back on this Basel III proposal. Senators Lummis, Coons, Gillibrand, and I sent a letter um, in, indicating our concerns with the current proposal. But I think it's also worth noting that the number of other organizations, a diverse group that are not normally aligned on <coughs> policy, you got bank trades, National Housing Conference, NAACP, Habitat for Humanity, uh, National Community Reinvestment Coalition, the list goes on, um, who have concerns with the current proposal. Uh, here's my concern. Um, I, I think we're, you know, we're trying to make the best of what was foundationally a bad proposal. I was a member of the Dodd-Frank Conference Committee where there was bipartisan support to not disadvantage end users, farmers, ranchers, small businesses. This had broad bipartisan support then and still does today. Unfortunately, the Fed could undermine this longstanding work done by Congress. I'd like to enter a few letters into the record, Mr. Chairman, that discuss the detrimental impact to end users. First, a joint uh, Agricultural Trade Association letter from the American Farm Bureau Federation, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, among seven others. Next, a joint Energy Trade Association letter from the American Gas Association and four others. And lastly, a letter from the American Public Power Association and the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At a time when, where it has become increasingly difficult for working people and people of color in particular to purchase a home, I worry that rising mortgage rates will put working families even further behind on accessing the wealth and equity that a home provides. So what actions, if any, is the Federal Reserve considering to better understand and to mitigate the impacts that your Basel III proposal may have on minority borrowers with, who disproportionately rely on high LTV mortgages due to the generational wealth gap that, pers that persists? We are, uh, we've received comments, including many, on the, on the mortgage changes, and we understand the concerns, and uh, you know, we're looking very carefully at that have made any decisions, but, uh, you know, we will announce them when we have. I've weighed in several times on the concerns that I have with regard to Basel III Endgame, uh, including uh, I'm concerned about the lack of transparency, the negative effects on mortgage lending and home affordability by disincentivizing banks from offering high loan-to-value loans that primarily help first-time home buyers and low to moderate income borrowers. I'm concerned that the proposal will make buying a home harder than it already is for many. Uh, and further down the road, I fear that it could disincentivize mortgage lending from the largest banks, particularly with regard to the secondary market and their impact on even smaller banks that do business with them. 
Uh, will you commit to an analysis of how bank capital proposals like Basel affect small business credit access and the small dollar lending before finalizing such proposals? I, well, I commit to that. I, I, l let me look into that. I don't, uh, I don't want to make a commitment that I'll undertake some big study, but uh, we'll, we'll look at the issue. But it, do you feel it's important that we do have an understanding the effect it's I going do. to have on folks? Small, small businesses the backbone. It's the, the, <laughs> and, and the bloodline they, of our and they economy. create the jobs. That's yes. right. I, I do agree. Yeah. Okay. And you've got Basel rules that discriminate against Main Street and for Wall Street. I'll give you some examples. Uh, 65 basis, uh, it's 65% if you're a publicly traded company and a loan, make a loan to a publicly traded company. You make a loan to CalPERS, they're not publicly traded, without objection, like to put in their article into the record. Uh, and so they're, in effect, getting, gonna have a tough, tougher time getting a loan. The local pizzeria is gonna have a tougher time getting a, a loan. You've got, in Basel III, ignoring mortgage insurance, which obviously makes the loan uh, more prudentially sound for the bank and uh, is very necessary for first-time home buyers. And you've got uh, a system where if you make investments in long-term bonds on Wall Street and you put them in the hold to maturity category, you don't have to recognize the losses uh, and mark to market. Um, so there, I, I hope you'll look at these in terms of the competition between Wayne Street and Wall Street for bank loans. So if you were to repropose uh, the Basel III endgame, would the Federal Reserve delay then the long-term debt proposal that's on the table? In other words, would you agree that the agency should not finalize this long-term debt proposal for bank holding companies until banks have a better understanding of what their capital obligations under Basel III endgame might be? So we, we haven't made the first uh, decision yet, so it's hard, I couldn't say definitively. But yeah, that's a question we'd be asking ourselves is, uh, is uh, what would be the implication for other rules, including the long-term debt. Well, and is the Fed considering changes to the requirement for regional banks uh, to issue long-term debt? Right now it's stated to be issued at, the, at 6 percent of, of risk-weighted assets in abundance of caution in case there needs to be a, a resolution, obviously. We know the logic for it. In October 23, uh, 2023, the board issued a proposal to update the debit interchange fee cap and regulation II. This is very concerning, given the data from both the GAO and Fed's own studies show that Reg II has significantly harmed access to free checking and other banking services for the country's poorest citizens. 